With the latest DCEU movie Blue Beetle in theaters and now that I've officially reviewed it, it's time for me to update my entire DC ranking. What's up my dude, your friendly neighborhood Tony here, and if you want to keep up to speed on all the new big movies that are coming out in theaters, make sure you subscribe. Now I did one of these tier lists for all the Marvel movies a little while back, and I feel like it's time for me to go ahead and let you guys know what I think about every single DC EU movie that we've gotten since 2013. Of course, this is going to be just my own personal opinions. It's going to take into account my taste. I don't want you to think that this is officially what the best and worst movies are. It's just the ones that I like. So whatever you think, whatever your thoughts are, your opinions, your own personal ranking, let me know in the comments below. I definitely want to hear it. What are some of your favorite and least favorite DC EU movies? So I've got the tier list up over here. You should be able to see that on your screen. Let's go ahead and get started with the first movie in the entire DC extension extended universe. And that is the 2013 Superman reboot, Man of Steel. Now, this is a movie that when it first came out, I think a lot of people were mixed on it as far as their opinions. A lot of that I think was due to the fact that it was kind of a departure from everything we had seen before with Superman, whether that's with Christopher Reeve's Superman movies, or even the 2005 Superman movie with Brendan Routh, or even the cartoons and a lot of the comic books. Superman had always been this particular type of character and the world around him was a certain way. And so they kind of took a departure when they came out with Man of Steel. But I really liked it. And honestly, the more I watch it as I go back to it, I just end up getting more and more out of the movie. And so this is going to be maybe a little crazy, but Man of Steel for me right off the bat is going all the way up into my S tier. I know, I know that might be controversial, but of course, this is just my opinion. I love Man of Steel. Let me know what you think, though, in the comments. Do you like Man of Steel as much as I did? Probably not. I mean, it's one of my favorite DCEU movies, but yes, for me, Man of Steel, right off the bat, we are going right into S tier. Okay, now after Man of Steel, the next movie that would come out is... Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. This was maybe a little bit of a weird choice as far as what DC was coming out with because we hadn't yet seen the new Batman in his own movie. It feels like they just kind of skipped the line and then went right to the Batman vs Superman, which is cool. I remember when they announced this, I think it was at Comic-Con or something like that, and they had a presentation that was going over what they planned on doing with the new Batman vs Superman movie, or at the time, we didn't even know it was Batman vs Superman. I think we just thought it was the next Superman movie. And I remember when they introduced the concept of them following The Dark Knight Returns, which is a famous comic book. It absolutely blew me away, and I think it kind of set the internet on fire. Now, unfortunately, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice was not really all that we had hoped that it would be. I still think it's a pretty good movie, but it certainly has a lot of flaws. I love that we get to see the new Batman being played by Ben Affleck. I love the scene with him fighting in the warehouse to save Superman's mom, but there are plenty of things I don't like. I was not a big fan of the way they depicted Lex Luthor, and of course, the whole plot twist about Batman and Superman's moms. I thought that was really poor writing, in my opinion. But overall, I did enjoy the movie, so for me, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice is gonna kind of go dead center. That's going to be a C tier movie for me. Kind of just as good as it is bad. So right in the middle. Okay. And in the same year that we got Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, we also got a little movie called Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad was a trip. I remember going to watch this with a friend of mine who is a big comic book head. In fact, he owns a comic book shop and we went to watch this movie. He told me that he thought it was amazing. He had already seen it. And after watching it, we went to go get something to eat. And I just remember looking at him like, you are out of your mind. This movie was horrible so bad. And I feel like for good reason, you know, there was a lot of issues with the editing. It turns out that for some reason, DC thought it would be a really good idea to completely re-edit the movie and to have the same company that edited the trailer edit the film, which maybe not a good idea to have a company that's not known for editing feature films edit your movie. That was a weird choice. It was just super disjointed. A lot of the dialogue I thought was terrible. It had interesting characters, but they just totally misuse them. And for me, the original Suicide Squad, as much as I wanted to like it when it came out, is absolutely one of the worst films DC has put out in a very long time. And so for me, 2016 Suicide Squad is going firmly in F tier. Okay, next up, the following year, 2017, we get our first female-led superhero movie, at least out of the modern age, and that is Wonder Woman. The first Wonder Woman movie starring, of course, Gal Gadot, who was a big standout for me in Batman v Superman. I really loved her character, and I still do love her character. And this first Wonder Woman movie I thought was very, very good. I wasn't 
blown away with the ending. I thought they kind of fumbled that a little bit, but overall, I thought it was a very good movie. I enjoy it a great deal. There's just something about that guitar riff that hits every time Wonder Woman's about to do her thing. Super cool. I know there was some worry about Gal Gadot playing Wonder Woman back in the day because she's very slender and people wanted to see a more kind of muscular and aggressive looking Wonder Woman actress, but she has done absolutely, pardon the pun, wonderfully in her depiction of Wonder Woman. So I really enjoy the first Wonder Woman movie. It does have some flaws. I don't particularly care for the ending, but I still think it was very good. So for me, that is going to go right into B tier. So we're filling out the board here a little bit. I like that. Next up is a movie that came out the same year as Wonder Woman. So 2017. This time we're gathering all of the superheroes together in the first Justice League movie, or I guess the only Justice League movie, unless you count the remake as a separate film, which it almost is, but we'll get to that later. But for me, the 2017 Justice League was no bueno. You know, I know there was a lot of issues with Zack Snyder having to be pulled away and being unable to kind of complete the film as he saw fit. And then they brought in Joss Whedon, which was a very strange choice. Again, it feels like DC makes decisions almost like willy nilly. They saw that the trailer for Suicide Squad was doing really well. So they had them edit the entire movie, which was a weird choice. And then they saw that Avengers did so well. So then they thought, I guess we'll just bring in Joss Whedon to finish this movie. Although Joss Whedon is a completely different director than Zack Snyder. They could not be more different. And so the movie ended up being very disjointed. The style of the movie, the tone was all over the place and the ending was nuts. I don't know what on earth they were thinking with that ending. Honestly, I will probably, unless I have to, I will never go back and watch this movie again. For me, it is going in the F tier. This was a failure of a movie. Although I would still put it above Suicide Squad. It's just both of these movies failed. They were incomplete movies. They were flawed movies from the beginning. And there's really no way I can put them any higher than that. Even though there may be certain bits and pieces that I enjoy, it's overall just a failure. Okay, next up, we have another solo movie from one of the members of the Justice League. And that is the first Aquaman movie, which came out in 2018. This movie is a very interesting one because it made a ton of money, especially overseas. I'm not sure why, you know, the overseas audiences, they tend to latch on to certain things that I, I just don't quite understand, but it made well over a billion dollars and it did have some really cool visual spectacle. I really like Jason Momoa as Aquaman. I think he's very good. The story I thought could have been better. It was, you know, a, a little basic at times, but I still really enjoyed it. I thought it was very beautiful as far as the special effects are concerned and all of that and the underwater scenes. And it did the one thing that, you know, comic book movies should try to do. It was fun. And so for me, I really dig Aquaman. I will go back and watch it from time to time. So I'm going to put that in the B tier. Although I will put it below Wonder Woman because I think Wonder Woman is just a better made, not a better made movie, but a better told movie. Aquaman, it, the story itself is a little lacking, but it is a lot of fun. So it's going to go into B tier for me. Okay, next up in 2019, we have another solo superhero story, and that is the first Shazam. This, of course, has Zachary Levi playing the main character. And this movie, I feel like there wasn't a lot of expectation for it, but it ended up being a very enjoyable movie. I had a really good time watching this. I think it had a lot of heart. It was a really well done family drama, and there were a number of scenes that really tugged at your heartstrings the main character, the actor who plays the younger Billy Batson, I thought was very, very good in his role. And Zachary Levi is just fun and lighthearted in the movie. So I really enjoyed it. So it's definitely going to go in the upper half of my list. I would say for me, now again, this is all personal opinion. I'm going to put it right above Aquaman. In fact, although of course Aquaman made way more money than Shazam and is probably way more famous. I enjoyed Shazam a little bit more, I think. At least the first one that is. The second one we'll get to in a bit. Okay, next up we move into 2020, which of course was the year of the pandemic. So a lot of movies got really screwed in this year. And this one here is Birds of Prey. It has a super long title. I don't remember the entire title. It stars, of course, Harley Quinn. And this movie, I think, got a lot of hate, but 
I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. It's a very goofy movie. It's got that kind of dark, twisted humor. I think Harley Quinn's a really fun character. And I just think this movie's a, a cool, twisted, fun, goofy tale. It certainly has some flaws, for sure. It's not a perfect movie by any means. But this is one I'll go back and watch from time to time. And I'd like to see more, both, of course, of Harley Quinn, but also of, like, the rest of the Birds of Prey. I doubt we'll get a sequel to this, but if we did, I'd definitely watch it. So for me, Birds of Prey, I'm going to put that in the upper half. It's going into the B tier, but I'm going to put it at the bottom of the B tier because I do recognize that it has a number of flaws, but I still enjoy it, so I'm going to have to put it in the positive side of things. Okay, next up, we go back to another solo superhero movie, and this one is, I think, the first sequel in the DCEU. I know we had Superman and Batman vs. Superman, but that wasn't technically a Superman movie. But here, we have Wonder Woman, the second Wonder Woman movie, Wonder Woman 1984. And this one also came out right in the middle of pandemic, so it was kind of slept on. It did really poorly at the box office, and when I finally got around to watching it, it was it was pretty bad. It had some fun bits. The movie takes place in the 80s, so you get to see a lot of 80s style and music and all that, which is cool, but it felt like it was just missing some of the fundamental aspects that make a solid movie. It was really just more spectacle than anything else for me. And then of course, the whole villain arc and how that wraps up and how they end up resolving that issue, I thought was completely absurd, but it certainly had things I enjoyed. I liked Chris Pine in the movie. I liked, of course, Gal Gadot. I enjoy the way that they're continuing her story. And I like the 80s vibe. So I can't say it's a very good movie, but it's decent. I'm going to put it in the C category, probably just below Batman v Superman for me. Okay, now we are going into 2021, and this is a very welcome remake that we had all been begging for for years, and that is Zack Snyder's Justice League. This movie is absolutely incredible. It's very long. It's something like four hours, but they aired it over multiple parts. And I just remember watching this and being completely blown away by it. It's what I feel exactly what Zack Snyder wanted to do with the first movie, but I don't think he would have been allowed to do this. So it's almost as if him not being able to complete that first film gave him the opportunity to go full balls to the wall exactly what his vision was without any hindrance. And because of that, this is an expertly crafted movie. I think this one is incredible. It's certainly one of my favorites. The only couple of negatives I have about it are one, that it is very, very long. So it's a bit difficult to sit through. Of course, you can always watch it in chunks. It is broken up episodically almost. And aside from that, it does have a bit of stink on it from the original movie, so it took me a little while to watch it for the first time myself because I was a little skeptical, but I'm really glad I did. It's one of my favorite DCEU movies, and just for the way that they wrapped up the story, the ending of this movie completely blew my mind. I had never seen a film change so much. It's an entirely different conclusion to the story and a way better one at that. Justice League, the Zack Snyder version, is going into the S tier. Now, this is where it gets a little controversial. Personally, I'm putting it below Man of Steel. Now, I know most people will disagree with me on that, and if you do, that's totally fine. But for me, I just love Man of Steel. It's my favorite DCEU movie, so I can't dethrone it here, but ooh, it is a, it is a close fight. Okay, next up, we have another remake. This is really wild. DC did two back-to-back -back remakes with the Zack Snyder Justice League, and now this... The Suicide Squad, which of course came out in 2021 as well, and is leaps and bounds better than the original. This one is directed by James Gunn, who has now gone on to become basically the head honcho over at DC, and I think he is perfect for The Suicide Squad. You know, it's really a group of goofy misfits who are completely expendable it's got that dark, twisted humor that James Gunn really has. I think he did an incredible job with this movie. Again, this one's totally not perfect, but it is, I think, a very good movie. Unfortunately, it didn't make a lot of money at the box office. I think, of course, that was probably related to the stink of the original Suicide Squad and then just coming out of the pandemic. But it's one of my favorites. I love it. It is going to be firmly placed atop the A tier. Okay, now next up would be the series Peacemaker, but I'm only doing movies here, so we're gonna skip Peacemaker here. And also, to be fair, 
I haven't watched it. I know, I know, shame on me. I have not seen Peacemaker. I really need to get to that. If you've seen it though, let me know what you think in the comments. Is it something I need to take the time out of my day and watch? Let me know that. So for now, I'm skipping Peacemaker because one, it's not a movie. That's the main thing. I'm ranking the movies here. And two, I haven't seen it. So forgive me for that. And so where we go from here is in 2022, Dwayne The Rock Johnson finally makes his debut as the one and only Black Adam. Now, this is a movie that had been in the works for years. I remember hearing about The Rock trying to make this movie so long ago, and it finally came out, and it felt like the movie had been in production for a decade, and the special effects and the story and the way they wrote the characters felt like it was a decade old at least. Everything in this movie was so dated. It was all stuff we'd seen before. The villain at the end was pathetic, if I'm being honest. They did this thing where there were these you know, demonic creatures that were released around the world, and people were just wiping them out by gently tapping them with a baseball bat, and they would just explode. It was, it was dumb. It was really dumb. I thought this movie was so poor. It had a couple characters that I thought were interesting enough, but then on the same token, it had some characters that I thought were horrible, and I don't know why they were in the movie. So for me, Black Adam, it's just not good at all. It is going in the D tier, saved from the F tier only because there were a couple characters that I liked. Aside from that, a waste. Speaking of, we have another waste of a movie that kind of revolves around the Black Adam universe, and that is Shazam! Fury of the Gods, which is the second Shazam movie. This one fell off a cliff for me. I really enjoyed the first Shazam movie. This one was is utterly forgettable. The The villains, the actresses, the uh, Helen Mirren that, and Lucy Liu that played a couple of the main villains in the movie, I don't know what they were doing. I don't know what direction they were given. It was really not good. Zachary Levi playing the main character Shazam. I feel like he didn't realize that Billy Batson, the character that he's supposed to be mirroring, has grown up since the first movie and is now a teenager. He's like something like 15, 16. And Zachary Levi is still playing him as if he's 12 years old, which he's not. So it was totally all over the place. And honestly, a movie that I just... I just really don't care to see ever again. This one is going right in the D category. I'll I'll put it above Black Adam, but just barely. Just barely because I like Shazam the character more than I like Black Adam. So, but that's just me. But they are they're pretty interchangeable. Okay, we're getting there. Just a couple left. Next up, we have The Flash. This is probably going to be my most controversial pick because I know the internet loves to crap on The Flash. And yes, I do agree that the CG in the movie is pretty wonky, but that's not the most important thing to me when it comes to enjoying a movie. For me, it's the characters, the story, the plot, the way it moves, you know, whether or not there are lulls and dips in the story, and if it's unique and interesting. And I think that The Flash was all of those things. It was certainly delayed for a very long time and probably suffered a lot because of that. And again, the CG was pretty ridiculous. But aside from that, I had a great time watching this movie. I love the fan service in it. And I know fan service is a, a little sketchy thing, right? Like it could be good. It could be terrible. For me, it really worked. And I'm going to put The Flash in the A tier. I'll, I'm going to put it below The Suicide Squad because I do like The Suicide Squad more. But I thought, despite the fact that we had to wait forever for this movie to come out, and despite some of the controversial stuff with the lead actor, I think it's a very good movie. I had a great time watching it. I am absolutely going to watch this over and over again in the future. And so The Flash, A tier. And then last but not least is a movie that I just watched and reviewed. You can check out my review for the movie. I'll link it at the end of the video. But that is the most recent DCEU movie, which is the second to last movie. The only one left to come out is the new Aquaman, if that ends up coming out. Allegedly, it's coming out this year. But for now, we have Blue Beetle. It stars Sholo Maridueña, who is from uh, the Cobra Kai series, which I haven't seen, but I've heard he's very good in that. And I really liked him in Blue Beetle. I think he's very good. I'm curious to see what they do with his character going forward. But the movie, for me, just did not work. You know, I heard that this was originally supposed to go straight to streaming, but for whatever reason, DC decided to put it out in theaters. And I can totally see why this was supposed to be streaming. It is just not up to the caliber of what we expect from comic book movies nowadays. The writer and director, 
were, in my opinion, a poor choice for this movie. The writer had never written anything anywhere like this. He had done a number of shorts and I think one feature film that was reviewed very poorly. And the director also had very limited experience. So it was a bit odd, the choices they were making here. The story is completely formulaic, which I know a lot of superhero movies can fall into a formula, but this is all almost beat for beat stuff we've seen before. And despite the fact that I like the main actor and the main character, it's just it's just bad. It's just pretty much a bad movie. And I'll watch a Blue Beetle sequel, partly because that's my job. I review movies, but I am interested in the character. I just need them to get a team behind it that is capable of this level of storytelling. So for the Blue Beetle, that is going into the D category for me. I will say kind of in between Shazam and Black Adam, really... Black Adam and Blue Beetle have a lot of similarities as far as the reasons why I don't like them. So it's going to go right into that D category for me. Again, I can't wait to see what James Gunn does with the Blue Beetle. I know he's going to be a main staple in the new DC universe, but this was not it. And that's it. That is my ranking. And of course, if you want to see the actual order in which the movies are ranked, it is right here. So from last place to first place, you have Suicide Squad, the 2016 Suicide Squad, Next to that is Justice League or Justice League, Black Adam, followed by Blue Beetle, Shazam, Fury of the Gods, Wonder Woman 1984, Batman v Superman, Birds of Prey, Aquaman, the original Shazam, the original Wonder Woman, The Flash, The Suicide Squad, the newer one, Zack Snyder's Justice League, and in first place, my favorite DCEU movie thus far, we'll see what happens with Aquaman, is Man of Steel. So this is my ranking. Of course, these are all just based on my own personal tastes. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I would love to hear your own ranking. And if you don't want to rank them all, just let me know what your favorites and least favorites are. I'd love to hear it. Of course, I'll link my Blue Beetle review right over here or somewhere. Just jump on into that if you want to check that out. And if you want to keep up to speed on all the new big movies that are coming out in theaters, make sure you subscribe. All right, I'll catch you in the next one. Be good.